He thought no peddler had ever been wearier or more lost. He tried to follow the directions those men had given him, the, the men who'd bought his wares on the Leek Road, but when he tried to follow the track down to the Dane Valley, it wasn't easy. The sun was setting, darkness was beginning to fall. He slipped and he slid and he fell, time after time. He had to zigzag through the undergrowth. He became wearier and wearier. He began to wonder, did this inn at Gradvatch even exist? And then, at last, lighted windows. He knocked at the door. The innkeeper opened it and welcomed him in and led him to a seat beside a log fire and brought him a mug of ale. The peddler noticed that there was a bloodhound lying there to his right, looking up at him. And to his left, another bloodhound looking up at him. He, he wondered why he seemed to be the only customer in the place. But then it was a lonely inn. Few people would visit here. And there was a, an unpleasant smell from the kitchen. It, the log fire was so warm and the ale was so good that he began to drift off to sleep. And as he dozed, he heard the kitchen door open and close. And suddenly, a little girl came out and stood just a few feet away from him. She stared at him and she said, What lovely plump hands he's got. They'll make delicious pies. He woke and as he did so, Someone stepped out of the kitchen and seized the little girl and pulled her back in there. And he thought, I've got to get out of here. He moved very quietly. But as he moved towards the door, he saw that one of the bloodhounds had stood and was watching him. And then the other bloodhound stood and was watching him. He felt for the door. He felt for the latch. He could only hope that when he opened the door the hinges wouldn't creak. He pushed the door wide and he stepped through. And then he ran. He ran and he ran along the banks of the river as fast as he could but they'd heard him. All the people of the inn, the innkeeper's family and the hounds were following him. How could he escape? He, in the moonlight he could be seen, or worse, the hounds could smell him. They could follow his trail. He jumped into the water and he started to wade along the river, again as quickly as he could. There, the hounds couldn't find his scent. Along he went until he found a stone bridge and under that bridge was a dark shadow in the moonlight, quick as he could, under the bridge he went, and there he stood in the cold water, in the dark shadow. Closer and closer came the pursuers, the hounds calling more loudly, the men shouting more loudly, and he waited, and then they were past him. And still he stood there in the cold river, in that dark shadow under the bridge, until the sounds of the pursuit had faded into the distance. Then, very quietly, he stepped out of the water and onto the bridge, and again he ran. And then, at last, he came to a village. Of course, it was all in darkness because people had gone to bed. But he stood in the middle of those rows of cottages and he cried out at the top of his voice, Help me! Please help me! They're trying to eat me! Help! As he carried on shouting, a light appeared in that window as a candle was lit. And then a light appeared in that window. And doors opened. And people came out into the middle of the village. 
What's all this? Who are you? What are you shouting about? What do you mean by it, waking decent folk out of their beds at this time of night? And before long, half the village had gathered round him and he told his story. He told how he'd gone to that inn, what the little girl had said, how he had run, how he had hidden from the hounds and the innkeeper's family and how he'd escaped over the bridge and run to the village. And one of the villagers said, hmm, it's that place. It's that place there's folk gone there and not been heard of since. And another said, aye, something needs to be done about it. And the third said, since this peddler has come and told us his story, this is the time when we should do it. The men of the village went and collected pitchforks and scythes and together they walked off in the direction of the inn at Gradbatch. And two of the women of the village took the peddler and they took him into a cottage and they fed him and they gave him something to drink and a bed to lie on. And at last he could unwind from his terrible experience and he fell asleep. They forced their way into the inn. They searched from room to room and there they found the belongings of travellers who had disappeared. And in the kitchen there were large cooking pots and in those cooking pots were human bones. So the villagers seized the innkeeper and all his family and they dragged them out of the inn and among the trees and there they hanged them from the branches, all except the little girl. For how could a child be capable of such wickedness? When the girl saw what had become of her family, she sneaked away through the woods, up the hill and onto the moors knowing that before long she would meet a kind, caring adult who would look after her. A nice, plump adult.